Katie Helpner, not uh, Trisha Helfer, posted on our Twitter uh, asking if there's any compelling videos out there of why people should get out and vote in 2020. So I thought I'd take a crack at it, and I did take a crack at it, but I was off by a power of 10 and a person of one. So I'm going to recut this, uh, try to keep it very short, and for me, that's a big ask. Uh, don't worry about it being forced because uh, this is something I'm quite passionate about because it's, uh, you know, it's pretty important. It's a very important year to vote in 2020. And I wanted this to come from somebody that has uh, had lost their health care this year um, for my wife and myself. And fortunately, I went through a long battle to reinstate it, but it was after I had already uh, paid out of pocket because we went for our first checkup, just a single checkup. Also, uh, someone that is uh, on the verge of losing their home. Um, right now, I'm in a room called Sloppy Joe's Bar, which is a recreation of my uh, granny and grandpa's 100-year-old uh, bar that was in the coal regions of Pennsylvania here. Uh, this is how I remember it in the 1970s. So I've recreated it using parts of their actual bar, bar room, um, that were in Col was in Colmount, PA. And uh, this was very important when I was able to finally uh, save up for a home for a down payment and mortgage. I'm still you know, I'm a 30-year mortgage. And uh, it took a, a lot of years, and I'm 54. Okay, so it took me a long time of living in a chicken coop, a literal chicken coop for 20 some years and before that living in apartments. So, uh, I believe that's important and also the fact that I am someone that in 2016 uh, felt the same way, none of the above. You know, I was a Jill Stein, I voted Jill Stein. Uh, because there just wasn't a good candidate and no one was uh, representing the people. And this year, I was going to sit out until about three months ago. I was just going to sit out. I wasn't going to send in anything. But we're at a point now where 20... <laughs> I almost said 20,000 again. <laughs> this is where I was off last time. 200,000 people have died of COVID-19. And this is the only reason to get out there and vote. And you might, and another 200,000 are, uh, are expected to die before the end of the year, doubling it. And that's because we're on our third spike. We're on our third spike of the coronavirus in the United States. And we haven't even dealt with the first wave of this uh, virus, this pandemic, this global pandemic. And currently, it's now declared that it's over, that it no longer exists, even though thousands of people continue to die from it every day. Um, and if, if you are somebody that think this is a conspiracy theory or a hoax, then all you have to do is try to think back to one of the first times we heard President Trump uh, talk about COVID-19 on the news, on video. And uh, one of the first things I remember is is him standing in front of a docked cruise, a cruise ship. People on vacation, and the cruise ship uh, had people that were infected with COVID-19. And what did our president say? Do. He didn't want to let anyone off the boat. Don't let anyone off the cruise ship. Now, did he not want to let people off the cruise ship because they were infected with a hoax? Um, as I mentioned, I don't want to get into too much politics, but for someone that says that, uh, you know, he responded right away by, uh, by stopping anyone coming in from China, which is a complete fabrication. And not only that, but if he stopped people coming in from China back in... February, well then now it's no longer the China virus. Now it's the Donald Trump virus in America. Um, that's going a little bit too far into the, into the politics and the nitty gritty of it. And, and believe me, like I mentioned, uh, I'm not for either party this year. I had to swallow my pride. I had to go against my conscience. 
And uh, that's something difficult for me to do because I try to approach things from a logical, a uh, ethical, uh, and uh, even skeptical viewpoint. And I'm always about ethics above policy. But this policy of allowing Americans to, to die daily and now considering it uh, resolved and, uh, you know, super Trump and all this other stuff, um, you have to ask yourself, well, if I want to open back up, which this administration does want to do, if I want to not lose my house, if I want people not to have to wait in lines for hours in food lines in their cars, if I want to have people um, not get kicked out of their apartments, uh, not lose everything they own, not have to go in debt because of uh, because they they're they're affected by this in some fashion. Like I work for myself, but my clients have all. Uh, been affected by this and uh, so consequently uh, I'm down the chain and and that's how it's affected me and I'm sure that's how it's affected a lot of you and maybe not and especially if it hasn't you need to get out and vote too because you want to be part of humanity you want to be humane and you want to help people out you can't have liberty and freedom and democracy if you're not alive. And that's the only reason to get out and vote this year. I mean, there's, like I said, there's, there's tons of other political reasons, but the only reason that is imperative that we vote, and we vote even if we're against voting this year, it's because we need to live. We need to be alive. And if not just for ourselves, I mean, I don't really care about myself. If I die, I die. I'm dead. I don't really know what happens. I cease to be. Just like before I was born, I don't know it. I don't care. How do, how do I care without a without brain function? But I have a family. And I have people that depend on me. Um, and even now, um, just a few weeks away, November 10th, my mom has her court hearing for guardianship. And there, there, there are so many people out there um, that have just had their lives turned upside down, as we all have. And there's only one way to recovery, and it's not to continue to think that nothing's wrong. Because if we do that, we're never going to recover in the United States of America. This is going to last for, well, until everyone's either infected or dead. And uh, as this strain changes, uh, we have a problem. Now, once the vaccine comes out, that might be a different story. Uh, that, that's going to be fantastic. But there's only one way to protect ourselves until that vaccine does come out. Well, there's many ways. But the easiest way is, is something that uh, one president, uh, one, one person under the election will want to do. And it's very simple. It takes a few seconds and you do this. Uh, you know, I could put it uh, in the wrong place, maybe on an eye patch like uh, a pirate. So if I go down below deck, I switch that so that this eye now that's used to darkness can see in the dark. But that's how easy it is. It takes a few seconds. And for those of you that think uh, uh, that's some type of uh, infringement on your rights, well, then, uh, you know, why don't you try to go in a store without your pants on? Or your panties. I don't want to be... Uh, or, or, that's getting more into the things I normally talk about. But honestly, uh, if you have a medical condition that's preventing you from wearing a mask, i, I got to just briefly mention that stupidity is not a medical condition. Uh, wearing two... Pla I, okay. <laughs> getting too far in. But that is my compelling reason to vote, and that is so that we can be alive to restart um, where we were. Both parties are going to have their corporate interests in mind. Both parties are playing political games of, uh, you know, we want to do this, but the other party doesn't want to do that. And this party, you know, blaming parties. Listen... You tell us the people that are voting against a stimulus bill, by the way, a stimulus bill, uh, which our president 
President Donald J. Trump signed the first stimulus bill, uh, one stimulus we've gotten. If we would have been getting um, a, a, an income to keep us afloat here, uh, while we wore masks, social difference, and, and at that point we were, uh, you know, isolating, uh, being kept in our homes, that was fantastic. Uh, but it wasn't done everywhere. And unless everybody does this thing, nothing's going to come of it. It doesn't work if only a few people do this. But that stimulus check was for uh, part of a $3 trillion plan. Well, if you figure out $3 trillion and the population in the United States of America, including men, women, children, babies, uh, people uh, that have uh, one foot in the grave, uh, rich, poor, no matter what, uh, people living on the streets already um, in cardboard boxes, that, that averages out to a little over $5,000 per person. Well, we didn't receive $5,000 per person. There's a lot to think about here. There's a lot to consider. But you don't even have to check the news. You don't have to um, even believe anything I say or anyone else says. All you have to do is know that we have a choice between being alive and um, being serious and adults about a global pandemic and not continuing on this course of doing the same thing over and over and over again and continuing to get our spikes. And every time we get a new spike, that spike's going to continue up and up before it starts coming down. And then the next spike, we get a little bit of a spike and then it's going to shoot way up again. And each time it gets more and more and we're never coming down to the base. We're never getting down to even close to where we started. We're just compounding it and compounding it. So even though we really don't have a choice, um, I think we have to vote for being alive to vote in the future. Now, there's a uh, quick, quick food mart around uh, my area that has a great marquee. And it, uh, it simply reads, and it's been reading this since the very beginning. It says, be humble, stay safe. And I think that's the best way for me to close this out. Be humble and stay safe, everybody. <laughs>